it's like Armageddon. We've literally had to just treat it like a gap year. Many venues like us will not, will be forced to close down in the coming days. One venue I'd sold out in Manchester is gone. I've basically spent all of my savings, I got fuck all. I mean, it's scary, it's scary for us all. We were in the middle of preparations, we were starting rehearsals with the artists. I had a German tour in April. We were meant to go into pre-production into Ibiza uh, and start filming this year. We couldn't do that. I've been involved in a production that was meant to be in New Mexico with TV, live music and a range of other things. And it's just been suspended now for who knows how long. We can't shut everything down permanently. We have to start addressing the fact that in the UK there are there is massive rise in suicides, there's massive rise in mental health problems, we've got people who are getting sick because they can't work, we've got people who are falling into poverty, those are all health issues as well. And you look at who's being affected with those, it's the younger age group who are not actually at risk as much as the older age group. So that's the balance that you're talking about there, Andy, and, and we are not making that case yet. We haven't been we haven't been brave enough to make it, frankly. It's affecting a lot of people badly. Life had changed lots. We could have blocked it off here completely. And in the end, if you say, have we made any money? I haven't made a fucking bean. I'm not going to make any money really off that gig. Do you know what I mean? It's just, we're doing what the electric ballroom needs to keep doing, you know? Because I think it's really important that we have these grassroots venues and, you know, family history run venues. People say to me, oh, you know, there's some rich DJs out there, you know, fuck them sort of thing. But the reality of it is people live within their means. So they might well have their flashy houses in Rockalisa or whatever. But then if you're not getting paid 300 grand a night, you can't afford it anymore. So you can be just as broke, you know, being a millionaire as you can being, you know, somebody with less money with, with smaller outgoings. And all these guys that work for us, they make money for two months. I've never seen anything like this, you know, ever. Everything's gone next year. I had a 25 year anniversary tour marked up that was meant to happen in May. That was an opportunity to perform the album. I had never, ever been able to perform it before. You know, people go, oh, the clubs are closed, the rich club owners. Well, there's a thousand people around each of them clubs, you know, from the cleaners to the drinks providers to the security guys, the dancers. The, there's a whole ecosystem around that nightlife that People don't seem to think about these guys, you know, and uh, yeah, it's, it's a pretty much a disaster, really. Prior to March, I'd finished a solo album um, for BMG, which is quite fun when you're 59. Um, and I joined Reef playing second guitar and I'd written and produced their new album. And we just finished that in March. So we had my touring, their touring and all of that kind of two records ready to release, two record labels. Um, I was, I'd never had so much fun in my life. That's why I was still doing it. Um, it was kind of paying myself back for all the shit I went through when I was young. And um, within days, every, you know, 50, 60 gigs, I mean, hundreds of thousands of power, just ridiculous. Armageddon for clubs now and live music. I started doing this when I was 15 in 1976. Gigging, playing the capacities and working men's clubs. I mean, it's kind of my last knockers. I mean, I'm 60 in a few months. My restaurant that I run has, you know, been pretty much decimated. I had six friends die from it, you know, so, and my uncle died. So it's sort of, you know, it isn't a joke. And I, obviously, if you wear a mask, you're more protected than if you don't. And once they open shit up, I have friends who own bars and they opened it up at restaurants. Once they started eating indoors, it, the numbers went up. I mean, my cousin owns restaurants in L.A. He had to close three. That whole project may be off the again. It's not just a live music event. It's also a documentary event. So even though some studios may have pay or play and some producers could get paid, a lot of the independents, not just in music, music venues, but also independent filmmakers and producers, the independents have been particularly hard hit all round. How are you going to social distance and shoot a movie at the same time? The rules that they've put on us basically makes us uninsurable. How are studios working in, in America now? Can you actually get in them and work in them or is there some kind of weird stick you've got to hold to, to keep people apart? Well, the, 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 the music I've been making most recently, and I've just finished up a, a, a Rocker's Revenge album that I've been working on, we, you know, basically, 
we do it online and, and you know, uh, Dwight from the group will do a vocal. He'll send it to me with the parts and I'll work on it, send it back. T Tina, who's in the group also, she's, she happens to be staying at my house now. So, but she's, she's, she's quarantined with us. So obviously it's fine for her to work with, with, with you know, with me. But we've been making music, but, you know, a lot of the music I've been making most recently, it's been that way anyway, that, you know, you might occasionally get together with, with rockers. There's four people in the group. So obviously we could do that. We had great optimism here in California, and I don't know how many people on the phone or on the Zoom call are from California, but we were moving forward and everybody had some great optimism around it. And then the numbers completely changed. And what the government did is very quickly shut things down. We had gyms open, we had movie theaters opening, we had small venues opening. Um, there were kind of policies going towards 500 people or less with social distance policies could be you know, venues could open and then it all changed. Our numbers went up and we shut down everything except outdoor dining and, uh, you know, what I would call kind of essential businesses. Um, so we can't, we can't eat indoors anymore and we could briefly. We can't go to gyms or health clubs anymore and we could briefly because everybody's trying to contain what you've all seen in America has been a real challenging pandemic in terms of the numbers. So it's just yeah, I think time will tell, but I think the states are doing what they can do based on the data they're given right now. And it's, uh, you know, right now, the current situation is not great. We're, we're reversing the numbers since we locked down again, but by opening back up, we proved that you can absolutely change the numbers and create a spike. So it's, uh, it's concerning for the live events business. Things are slowly getting back in production. Um, I mean, initially it's really TV shows, certainly in the UK. In the US, a bit like what Brandon was saying, really, everyone was gearing up to go, you know, the cinemas, everything in LA was opening. Production was slated to start happening within COVID safe environments. That got put back a bit. Um, I think what we're finding is because of the movement now away from theatrical releases with Universal's announcements a few weeks ago and the way that the streamers are taking over, um, those streamers in the UK, they've all basically taken very long leases on all the main studios. So within the studio environment, they can create COVID safe environments. Um, and a film that we were co-producing actually called The Card Counter was shut down in, uh, by, um, by Paul Schrader, was shut, shut down in New York four days before the finishing of the filming. Um, Paul managed to get the cast together to finish the filming in Minneapolis about three weeks ago. So that got in the can. So, you know, and Paul's over 70, you know, he's in his mid 70s, so he's definitely at high risk. TV is opening very, very slowly. Every studio have infectious diseases experts working with them. And in June, there was a white paper released by the studios that um, I think someone talked about this, negotiating with the guilds and the unions about how that applies to them. And things are slowly opening up. Uh, Tyler Perry's been shooting in Atlanta. British Columbia has just come to an agreement with the Guild, so British Columbia seems like it's opening up. But there's very little shooting in Los Angeles right now. The studios are really concerned because shutting down is way more expensive than gearing up. Because once you start rolling, there are various people, writers, directors, actors, who are all pay or play. So they're all paid out for the entire pro you know, for the entire length of a series. So it's all very delicate terrain. They pick off the things that are obviously unsafe, which is capacity, places, clubs and, and gigs. And obviously that, that could be a problem, but, uh, 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 but there isn't any forward thinking on how to solve it apart from absolutely zero. And I think the, the most important thing Lee, is for um, the extension of the furlough scheme, um, but actually recognising the fact that certain sectors are more affected disproportionately than others. So uh, at the moment, it's very difficult for Henry to have a full complement of staff with the social distancing measures at the Dublin Castle. And many, many venues have said that live music can't happen here in Camden. We're trying to um, open up so there's m lots more um, street-based eating and drinking, which is easier during good weather, um, and seeing what we could do with live music in that respect. But it becomes more difficult when you're having live gigs, which are just impossible to put on at the moment. We're so unsupported, and I'm not talking about me, I'm talking about the guys that work for me, are completely unsupported, right? All Some of the greatest musicians in the world are completely unsupported. They're not writing songs, they're not recording anything. They cannot 
Now the DJs, great. If you could get them back, at least it would open the door for what we do. But what we do needs so many people in a room to make a record, 10 people in a room, all highly skilled, thousands of pounds a day. You need a functioning creative model. I'm, I'm in the middle of, of, of a record and every time we try and do something, the government defeat you. So if I go back to the UK now, I've got a 14 day lockdown before I can go to the studio, I can't even take the dog for a walk. Andy, just pay the fucking thousand pound fine and get on with it. Yeah, come on. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, mate. Just pay the thousand pound yeah. fine. Because you know how many fines they've issued? They've issued and then, ten fines in the whole of the I'm UK. Given, and then when I'm giving my youngest the right bollocking for breaking it, she's going to go, oh, well, thanks very much, Dad. You know, I, I, like someone's got to kind of stick to it, right? I'm the producer of the record. Right, so I'll just go and break all the rules and fuck the quarantine. That's the problem. We had, a, we had a very detailed way of making records, very sophisticated. It's completely fucking broken. And without that, there's nothing to sell. And if that's off for two years, like we can't function in the recording thing, the creative thing, you know, and, and all of the bands we're talking about get together and do what they do. I spoke to Rami from the food. You can't... They, no one can get in the same room. Little things, what they're doing is they're saying, like, if you're going to shoot in Ibiza, you have to have the crew all together, staying together in a hotel. They're not allowed to go out on their own. They're not allowed to go anywhere, which is nigh on impossible to do. So it has affected us quite severely. The actual act of dancing is not inherently dangerous. You know, singing, you know, Ed Sheeran songs at the top of your voice could be more dangerous, right? <laughs> and, and, and for some reason, they've latched onto dancing in this enormous way. And I've had conversations. Dancing in chairs apparently is okay. I can't dance anyway, so it's okay. But, but standing up and dancing is a real problem. So, so I, I do get it. Um, and we are, in, as much as we can, enforcing it. But uh, the rules are slightly arbitrary. And this is the thing is we know so little about this virus. Such huge decisions are being made without evidence to say whether they will actually make things better or make things worse. If we go back to the beginning of the, the, the beginning of this virus, my attitude very quickly became things have changed. We can't assume they're going to go back to normal ever. We can't assume the past is going to come back. So I just, my attitude was, right, I want to adapt my business so it works now. We've opened up again to sort of pay the staff and that just hasn't worked. So many people still on part time, you know, they're not really going out for lunches. And, uh, you know, they're, if, they're going, if they're going home at part time, that means they're going home at two o'clock instead of going out for lunch and going back to work. So that's not really work. I think we're going to have to close that after four years of running it and it being really successful. So I think that's pretty much dead in the water, to be honest. We just created an environment that wasn't great, but with some renegotiation, we could get through. And, and in all honesty, we achieved it in both businesses. And we, we're probably continuing to achieve it in Pikes, but with Ibiza Rocks prior to the UK quarantine, yeah, it, it, it's pretty good. It's pretty, it's pretty good. It's a socially distanced venue. It's got a whole bunch of day beds. Instead of having a capacity of two and a half thousand, it's got a capacity of maybe 700, but the spend per head is higher. Talent isn't as necessary. There isn't much talent on the island. So it was just a different business model. We were still losing money, uh, but I could see if we have to repeat this business model next year, I do believe it's a viable business and I do believe it'll work. So that has been basically our, our attitude is just move on, the past is gone, it may never come back, let's just adapt. Fatboy Slim played last Tuesday, it was great, he's playing again tomorrow. Uh, it's a socially distanced, very different gig, but it's as good as it gets how, how at the moment. Norman, how has Norman taken to playing in that environment? I mean, if, in my view, if you're a DJ, you love music, or you're an artist, you want to play, and is that Norman's view on it, uh, playing? Stop Norman playing in public for six months then put him on, a, on, a, on his first stage with public. 
we, 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 it was an unfair advantage. We hadn't, he absolutely loved it because just performing, to, you know. So yes, it was, it was a really special moment, but it was a really special moment where the audience had gone through six months of, of, of lack of culture and humanity and, 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 and so had, had Norman in his, in, in, in his ability to perform. So yes, we did have an energy. Yes, we did have an atmosphere. It was actually quite good, but it's how sustainable that is in the medium term. You know, the, the, fir the, the elation of, wow, something's happening. You know, I'm not sure. But it was, yeah, it was good, and we'll see how tomorrow is. And then obviously IMF, you know, we, we'd sold out the whole of Destino Hotel, all the rooms, uh, tickets are flying out for Dork Villa, and so on, and, you know, a lot of delegates were, were getting on board, so it looked like it was going to be our best year ever, and then obviously that got cancelled. Uh, the same as Dork Villa uh, got cancelled. Uh, uh, Dork Villa was cancelled, then, of course, our event in... Malta, IMS Malta, was another one that got cancelled. 25 years ago, set up the funky room in Pasha that would have been 25 years this year, only we're closed. Every business has found themselves in the position this, this season to take the risk or not take the risk, uh, considering the, the, what you have in hand to play with. I think everybody has to do numbers to, to see if you're going to lose more, <laughs> just uh, not opening. For us, an operation as large as what we have is very risky to put it on the road. To start with it, to start the engine, it's very expensive. I think if this lasts only this season, we have uh, big possibilities that they, yeah, that they can survive. Because I think 2020 is just to resist and try to, to begin a new 2021. But I am sure, some, unfortunately, some of them will struggle. We're in a better position than others because we're a freehold business. We bought the place. But like me, most of my life, with all the bars here, whether it was The Rock, whether it was God's Love Bar, whatever, we were renting them. So had we been renting, yeah, you'd be fucked. You can't, you can't sustain it. It's impossible. Because of our license, we, we were not able to open the space. We, we could not even think of trying that. And, and it's just, it's unfortunate. And uh, every time that I go into the, into the venue and I look at it and I see everything that is around and totally empty, I mean, it's depressing. It's, it's true that not everybody could open. It's true that the small businesses, uh, hotel businesses or agro-tourisms and, uh, and boutique hotels, second residences are were going very well because the Ibiza is a, uh, a destination that everybody wants to go. And little by little, the August was not going bad. It was quite, quite good with, with, with all the restrictions and, and, and all the things we know. No? But after the quarantine of the British government, after the German government, Holland, all the countries have uh, fa have warned the citizens not to come to, to Ibiza. This has been a, a big punch for the island, I would say. It's the first year off and it's really quite depressing, but at the same time you've got to not let it be too depressing or you know it will get you down we've just got to lit we've literally said this is a holiday man who's working really hard in the studio uh and and i'm lying on the beach and doing stand-up paddle but what we're now seeing is continued changes the virus is beginning to take more of a, an effect on the island again um the regulations are are clamping down for understandable reasons the, the winter will be long and then when you look at my DJs, Manu probably had about, well, last year he had 130 shows. I think we'd already got about over 100 in the books for this year. You know, and, you know, two grand a show, that's 200 grand for, for, for the kid, you know, for, the, for, for, for Manu. Uh, and my 20%, of course. But uh, all gone. You know, at the end of the day, completely wiped out. You lost like that and you're back to reality. And, and that is 100% the points now. The island, you can see that, that it's getting into a somehow a reset on the island. There's a reset coming up, okay? And I think that only COVID, what has done is to accelerate that reset. For me, this has been a massive reset, a real, um, a come down, but a real connection to like actually being at home with my family, to uh, gathering what really, really matters. Um, you know, I've been touring for most of my life, so it's quite easy to um, think that that's all there is, you know? 
This reset is going to be really interesting because it will come up with new concepts of how we entertain the public. So we can talk about finances, but I think that health and family and being around your loved ones is more important than the business. I understand why we're valuing what we stand to lose from this virus, but what, not, what we don't seem to be valuing is what we're sacrificing in order to avoid this virus. Now, why aren't we actually weighing up the amount of sacrifice and putting it against the amount of benefit? And I'm not, I, I just think we have to weigh it up. We are an island very uh, um, seasonal because of the tourism, and in March we were preparing for welcoming everybody in the island. We had our last event, it was the 6th of March, that we did the International Jazz Festival. And I remember the night before I couldn't sleep. There were no cases of COVID. And actually the 6th of March, at 2 in the afternoon, there was the first news of the first case in Ibiza. Social needs were the first issue. And then what's going to happen with businesses? Because only primary needs were allowed to open, all the rest, restaurants, bars, any kind of sh commerce, everything was closed. So uh, it was quite a problem to try to, to sort it out everything and, uh, and with the police, with the volunteers, volunteers to reach everybody to have primary, need, uh, primary needs uh, sorted. We have this beautiful place here called Babylon Beach, but we are currently working on third capacity because we're just not allowed to have people and we're not allowed to have DJs and we're not allowed to have some beds only 20 not 45 and we're not allowed to make parties but outside of that everything's fantastic <laughs> yeah so i've um been on a dance and drama academy for children and adults we teach dance drama and i've had to move out of my um building um because it wasn't really safe to um, keep all the children in a small space so we had to have like limited capacity so I had to move to a bigger venue where there's bigger space and uh, we've got indoor and outdoor space because we don't know from one day to the next if we are allowed indoors or outdoors, if they have to wear masks, it's just all over the place. Like we've set up businesses we've had here for years. I mean, my husband has a party called Mischief, which was going to be flourishing this year and was really going on from leaps and bounds. But, you know, we've had to be controlled. We are still, ha thankfully, having the parties and people are coming and we're doing the seated rule, the social distancing. We can't dance, we have to stay seated, but the people are showing their support. However, there's only so much that that can carry on where people lose the faith and they lose the passion for going out and and being in those environments this business is founded on genius brilliance right you wouldn't be here without fucking led zeppelin and the rolling stones and people who spent dedicated years and everything they fucking made to making those records and now it's completely shattered and it's kind of been ignored now you're going to wipe out a generation of creativity because there isn't the human touch. No atmosphere. I think they had to actually wear masks when they were sitting down. So it's just, I mean, who, what band wants to see your audience sitting there with like masks on their face, no expressions? It's, it's crap. Now we have to say, if you had cancer or heart disease or strokes, or a whole range of other things, even pre or postnatal, a lot of those people have been damaged by the response and reaction to what's happened with COVID. Now we understand why there was a, a focus and orientation on them, but a lot of people have effectively ended up becoming far worse ill or, or some people died as a consequence. The long-term effects are gonna be huge. Obviously I'm feeling for people that are really, really being stretched by this scenario that we're all in, um, but I think it's, it's got a massive opportunity I think it's got a massive opportunity for talent to shine through because I think that a lot of that was being missing. Um, I think hype has had a big, big play in the business we're in. Um, obviously, it can help us in some ways, but it can also sterilize the business that we're in. You know, So I think that historically, when there's been any kind of form of social pressures, but this is a global pressure, art seems to excel, expression excel. People open their hearts, people start coming from a real place rather than a place that they think they need to come from to fit in. At the end of the day, it's, it's not great. It's, it's, we're just dealing with what we have. Is it sustainable? And, you know, is there a better way? I'm not saying there is or there isn't, but I think we should certainly be asking the question. Before this, we even got in this situation, everybody was screaming climate change. 
the climate's changed. We've got it. We have to follow um, government's advice on, on whatever the situation is, uh, because that's set, set, that's set centrally. Um, I think what we want to see is people um, out there enjoying the local economy, because when uh, you know, people go to gigs, it's not just about the concert, it's about the meal before, it's about the taxes they may have, it may be the drinks at other venues, and uh, there's a trickle-down effect. So a venue uh, locally, like the Dublin Castle or the Roundhouse, will have a massive impact locally on the economy and account for many hundreds of, of jobs. So we, we want them to be open as quickly as possible. We, we want them to be open uh, safely. So we have to follow the government's advice and make sure that every person that comes to our borough um, has a safe night out and um, we'll follow that um, and make sure that people uh, continue to do so.